Hello, my name is Xiang Zhang. So I'm a PhD student uh, from the University of Utah. So today I will be talking about our research on cache-aided multi-user private information retrieval. So specifically, the paper I'll talk about our SIT uh, paper this year called Fundamental Limits of Cache-aided Multi-User PR, the two message, two user case. So this is a joint work with Doc Wan from Technical University at Berlin and Doc Song from University of North Texas and Doc G, which is my supervisor and Professor Carey from the Technical University of Berlin. Here, uh, first uh, I will briefly introduce the formulation of the problem. And then I will talk about uh, the proposed achievable scheme. Then I will um, also talk about the converse that we have proposed that matches the achievable scheme. And then I will sum up, uh, wrap up the uh, this presentation and talk about several future directions. So uh, for caching with multiple servers, um, for people who is familiar with coded caching should be familiar with this architecture that I, that I presented, that I have presented here. So in this architecture here, there's one server so this server has access to a file library that consists of uh, k different files. So this file, each file is denoted by w1 until wk. So this server is connected to a bunch of users. Specifically, the number of users is equal to k sub u. So each user it has a cache, mem cache memory, um, uh, cache memory denoted by z. So, um, in this work different from coded caching, we incorporate multiple users, uh, multiple servers. The number of servers equal to n here. So um, let theta, uh, theta 1, theta 1, and theta 1, theta 2, until theta ku denote the demand vector of the users. So for caching with multiple servers under server privacy, we also call this problem cache-aided multi-user private information retrieval problem. So basically, um, this system works in two different phases, uh, similar to coded caching. The first phase is called the cache placement phase, where um, the users fill up their cache memories using some uh, some using the files from the file library. So each file, uh, each user is able to cache uh, m uh, m l bits. So here l is the number, is the length of each file. Okay. Um, in the, the second phase, it's called private delivery phase. In this phase, the users just reviews, uh, review their demand. Each user will demand a specific file um, and send the, collectively, they send their queries to the each database. Upon receiving the queries, each database will just respond with an answer denoted by X. For example, X1 here is the answer. Uh, X1 here is the answer from the first server. So of course, this answers is a function of the user demand vector. So the private server privacy requires that. So each server should not learn anything about the user demand vector. So this independent, this just means the demand vector should be independent of the uh, queries or answers uh, that is seen by each server. So we can wrap this in uh, information. Uh, we can actually wrap this in in terms of mutual information, which given the uh, cache of the users, this is because um, we assume that the server knows the cache of the users. So the demand vector and the answer for each database, uh, each server should be independent. Okay, our goal for this problem is to find the optimal load versus memory trade-off. So the load is just defined as the total number of downloaded bits from the servers um, which is then normalized by the file lens. Here's the summary of the model assumptions we have here. We assume the public and deterministic cache. So being public, as I mentioned before, just means that the the the, the cache of the users is some global information, which is uh, shared by all the servers and users. And so the cache can be arbitrarily designed, which means that uh, the cache doesn't have to be a linear combination with files or some uncoded bits, it can be anything. So 
Uh, our problem actually has connection to code caching and the single user PR problem in, in this way. So uh, we have multiple servers here. If we have a single server, this is exactly the coded caching problem um, proposed by Madali and Nissan like um, many years ago. Um, and if we have only, we have multiple, we also have multiple users here. If we only have a single user, so this will become the cache edit PR problem, which is also, which has also been previously studied. But if we combine these two together, the, specifically we bring the effect of multi-user into the coded caching, into the PR, uh, PR problem, this thing, the intersection of these two areas, interplay of these two areas just becomes very, very interesting. And this problem turns out to be very challenging. So, uh, of course, there could be uh, a lot of extensions to to this model. For example, clothing servers, storage constraint servers, individual privacy, or even multiple requests. Uh, basically, any extension to the PR problem can be considered here. And which the solution to these problems are not trivial at all. So this will just require requires very new techniques and um, to solve these problems. So, um. Regarding this cache edit multi-user PR problem, uh, in our, one of our previous previous work, we have proposed a product design. So this design works for arbitrary number of files, users, and servers. Um, uh, despite being optimal in the very large and a very small memory region, so this product design is opt order optimal uh, in general. So for in this presentation, or in, uh, we consider a specific case, which is two file, two user case. And we add one more assumption is that the users has distinct demands. We find the optimal load versus memory trade-off uh, for, uh, for this case. So this uh, figure here gives the optimal uh, load of the uh, coded caching problem with two users and two files. We can see there are two corner points so which are achieved by uh, coded placement. Uh, if we look at uncoded placement, the, uh, the, the load is shown in this blue curve. It, the load is actually slightly higher. Um, now, we look at, if we look at the multi-user PR problem with two files and uh, two users, so the always and distinct demands, the optimal load curve is given by this red curve here. So, uh, we can see, so this optimal curve has three linear segments. The leftmost segment is the same as the caching uh, curve. This just means that means that privacy has no penalty in the very small cache memory regime. And if we look at the rightmost segment, so this is actually the same as the single user cache edit PR load. So because the single user PR load is also a natural corresponding for our problem, because any more users can only possibly increase the load, right? So this, this coincidence just means that our scheme is also optimal in the large memory regime, which also means multiple users has no penalty. So uh, our assumption is that we consider the distinct demands, which means that the demand of vector can only be either be one, two or two, one, so of course, this load is uh, smaller than the general demand case, which is shown in this uh, green curve. How do we how did we get this green curve? Actually, in one of our previous work, uh, we have proposed an achievable scheme that can achieve this uh, load in the green green curve, and by using a computer aided converse technique, we can actually show this green curve is optimal for the case of two or three servers. So uh, in the literature, literature, this um, general uh, multi-user PR problem is, is kind of very wide and open. Only some specific cases has been solved. So in the, the state of the art is that, so the, the optimal trade-off has been solved for the case with two files, two users, and two servers. So in this paper or in this work, we extend the, the, the techniques there to arbitrary number of servers. And, and of course with distinct demands. Now, first let's look at the achievable scheme that we have proposed. 
Um, so again, the optimal curve has two uh, counterpoints. If we can prove that this counterpoint is achievable, so by memory sharing, like in coded caching, we can actually achieve the intermediate, all the intermediate points between these two counterpoints. Okay, so here, two servers and two users. So we denote the two files by A and B. So first of all, um, we divide each file into three bits. For example, file A is divided into A1, A2, and A3. Uh, this is a we do the same splitting for file B. So the cache of the users is as follows. For user one, the cache Z1 is just A1 plus B1. So this addition is on the binary field. For user two, the cache is A2 plus B2. Now, the general idea of designing this achievable scheme is that it has two steps. So the first step is that we try to specify an answer structure that is private. And then the second step, we'll look at how to, under the, this, this private structure, we'll look at how to de determine the coefficients for, some, for, for the linear combinations of the, which is uh, the answers takes the form of linear combination. We'll look at how to determine the coefficients for these linear combinations and such that the user can decode their desired files. Okay, for the first step, Okay, for let's assume F1 and F2 are two realizations of the answers from server one. And also G1 and G2 are two answer realizations from server two. What do we do here? With the combination of F1 and G1, we assume the user demand vector one, two can be decoded, which means that user one can decode uh, file A and user B can decode file B. Again, with the combination of F1 and G2, we assume that the demand to one can be decoded. So we do the same thing for F2 here. So F2 here, if we uh, look at F1 here, because server one doesn't know uh, which of G1 and G2 is chosen by the second server. So it will not be able to know what the user real actual user demand vector is. So because this structure is symmetrical, um, so this privacy can also be guaranteed from the perspective of server two. So next, uh, we just let each um, uh, server transmit some linear combinations of the uh, bits of the files. And then we try to determine the coefficient for this linear combinations such that the, the, the users can decode. Okay, the answers uh, for the linear combinations contained in each F1, F2, G1, G2 are given here. For example, F1 has two bits. The first bit is A3, and the second bit is the summation of B1 plus B2 and plus B3. Now, uh, let's consider the combination of F1 and G1. This uh, corresponds to the user demand vector 1, 2. So let's look at how user 1 can decode file A. Now, if we look at the cache of user one, B1 clearly is an inference to user one. So in also to eliminate the eliminate this inference, so B1 has to be decoded from the answers. Actually, from the combination, from the linear combination B1 plus B2 and plus B3 in F1, and together with the second linear combination of G1, which is B2 plus B3, if we subtract these two, we can actually decode B1 from the answers. Then by subtracting B1 from the cache, user one can decode A1. Now user one still wants A2 and A3. How to decode this? Actually, if we look at the blue two blue box here, uh, by using the bit A3 from F1 and A2 plus A3 from G1, actually user one can decode A2 and A3. Therefore, A2 and A3, therefore um, user one can decode file A. So this is very similar um, uh, for the case of user two. So again, for user two, it wants B. So A2 is an inference. It has to be decoded from the answers, which can be decoded here. And again, it will still need B1 and B3. Again, using this linear combinations in the red boxes, two red boxes, it can decode B1 and B3. Therefore, it can decode file B. So um, this, is a, this is a case for only two servers. So for arbitrary number of servers, specifically N servers, this memory load pair is achievable. Um, 
And uh, now let's look at the second corner point here, which is uh, the memory size is two thirds and the load is one. For this one, this point actually is actually achievable for MPU, uh, for the MU PR with the same setting, but with general demands. Because the distinct demand case is just is strictly a subset of the general demand. So it is also achievable for our uh, case with distinct demands. Okay, for general end servers, so this memory load pair is achievable uh, as shown in one of uh, our previous works. Now let's uh, go to the converse part. So uh, as we can see, the optimal curve here actually has three linear segments. So let's look at the, the case, specifically the case with two servers. So for the first segment, it is the same as the caching um, caching converse. This just, as I, prev as I have mentioned previously, this just means um, um, privacy has no penalty in a small memory regime. Um, for this caching converse, I will not go into the details. Uh, if you are interested, just pause the video and have a look, a detailed look if you want. Um, then uh, let's look at the third segment. The third segment is the same as the multi is the same as the single user cache data PR problem, because adding more users can only possibly increase the load. So this uh, uh, this single user bound is also a bound corresponding of our multi user case. Now because the coin sets they are the same, so we can conclude that our uh, scheme is also optimal in this regime. So the most challenging part for the multi-user PR problem actually comes in the converse proof in the middle segment as shown here, when the memory size is greater or equal to one third, but less or equal to two thirds. So specifically, we want to prove 3R plus 3M being great, greater or equal to five. So again, we look at the, we first, to, in order to prove this, we look at the decoding structure from uh, derived from the privacy requirements. Again, let's assume capital F1 with capital G1, this with this combination of the two answers, the user demand vector one, two can be decoded. And again, from the privacy uh, of server one, there should exist another answer of the second server such that um, such that the user demand 2-1 can be decoded with a combination of capital F1 and capital G2. Okay, due to the privacy of the server 2, we there should also exist another answer of capital F2, such that with capital F2 and G1, the demand 2-1 can also be decoded. If you look at this, we see there's a decoding tree for server 1, when you fix F1. This is, there's also a decoding tree for server two if we fix G1. So we call this the tree-like decoding structure that reflects the privacy of the requirements of the servers. So uh, uh, one thing I want to uh, mention is that capital F1, F2, G1, G2 are not specific answer realizations. They are actually random variables, okay. So with this decoding structure in mind, what do we need to do next is to find three pairs of the combinations of F and G and three cache terms such that we can decode five files in total from, uh, from uh, these, these terms. How can we do this? Okay, we can lower bound the three R plus three M by, the joint, by these three joint entropy terms. As we can see, from each of these joint entropy term, W1 can actually be directly decoded due to the decodability requirements. Okay, after decoding W1 here, we got three uh, conditional joint entropies. Okay, here we have assumed that the file has a unit length. Okay, what we if we look at these three leftover entropy terms here, if we can, for example, if we look at the second term, if we can add F1 to this term, then from the combination of F1, G1, and Z2, we can decode W2. Uh, if we look at the third entry term here, and if we can add Z1 to this term, then from the combination of 
F1, G2, and Z1, we can actually decode another W2. So with the three decoded W1 and these two W2, we should be able to decode in total five files. This is a direction to go. The, now the things left is to uh, manipulate this joint entropy term such that the uh, desired uh, uh, F1 and Z1 can go to the place C they are needed. So where is F1 and Z1? They are actually contained in the first joint entropy term here. It's here, F1 is here, Z1 is also here. So by the chain rule of joint uh, entropies, so we can uh, write the uh, first joint entropy into two parts, uh, which is uh, with the first part being F1 condition on W1 and the second part being Z1 condition on W1 and F F1. Again, we can uh, write the second and the, the third joint entropy terms in the previous uh, row um, and uh, as follows. And we can drop, uh, so in this uh, third row, we have dropped some information, um, conditional information, uh, conditional entry, which are not useful. Okay, so by combining F1 and G1, Z2, we can actually decode one more W2. Then by combining Z1 and F1, G2, we can decode another W2. Therefore, we're able to decode two W2 in addition to the three W1 that we have already decoded. Now we obtain this bound. So uh, for the case of arbitrary number of servers, uh, I want to uh, give a brief intuition of how can we construct the decoding structure. So for the case of, let, let's look at the case with three um, servers. Again, let F1, G1, and H1 be an answer from the three servers respectively. So. From the privacy requirement of the first server, there should, uh, uh, let, uh, okay, let's wait one more step. Okay, let's see with the combination of F1, G1, and H1, so the demand vector one, two can be decoded. Then by privacy of server one, um, there should exist another combination of the answers of server two and three, uh, which is in this case is G2 and H2, with the combination of F1, G2, and H2, the demand vector 2, 1 should be able to be decoded, right? Again, um, again, this is similar. We, we do the same thing for server 2. There should exist F2 and H3 such that the demand vector 2, 1 can be decoded. This is also, we do the same thing for server 3. Now we obtain this decoding structure. Our task here is that find the 2, 1, minus 1, which in this case equals five answer combinations of F, G, H, dot, 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 or whatever, if you have more uh, servers. And two N minus one cache atoms in order to decode the three N minus one files from these atoms. So we can then apply the similar techniques as in the previous example to obtain the uh, converse bond here. So the right hand side of this bond actually three m equal to is actually equal to three m minus one this actually consists of two m minus one and h w one and n h w two you can imagine in the first stage we decode the two m minus one and h w one and in the uh, remaining with the leftover remaining conditional joint entries we can decode n h w two so together we'll be able to decode the three m minus one files Okay, to sum, sum up, so um, in this presentation, we talk about the cache aided multi-user PR problem. Uh, specifically, we look at one example with two files, two uh, users and arbitrary number of servers. And of course, with uh, a restriction that the demands of the users should be distinct. So we proposed an achievable scheme used based on the concept of, of cache-aided inference alignment. Uh, if you are interested in this, please have a look at our paper. And then we also uh, derived the converse proof based on a very novel tree-like decoding structure that uh, reflects the privacy constraints of the servers. Okay, this area, generally speaking, is still open. Okay, because it's very interesting because the multi-user PAPR problem is just, it's an intersection of a coded caching problem and the single user PR problem. These two are also, are, are, are both very important topics in information theory. So we find that 
if you in, in if you combine this the MUPR problem, actually it's a combination of these two. But the problem is not trivial at all. It seems that in order to characterize the fundamental trade-off, we need to derive very new, you know, uh, in terms of the achievability and converse proof, we uh, both new techniques are techniques are needed. Of course, we uh, we can consider several future directions. For example, the unknown cache case, which means that the servers does not know the cache of the users or the clothing servers, which means that subsets of the servers can actually talk to each other and know each other's query. So of course, in this case, protecting the user demand uh, from the servers becomes a bit harder. Um, and also we can consider another variant, which is uh, the incorporation of the user privacy. This just means that besides the privacy, uh, server privacy, each user should be prevented from learning other users' demand. Uh, demands. This is particularly useful in modern day distributed uh, computations like uh, uh, like uh, distributed uh, model training or federated learning where the privacy of each agent actually matters. Okay, thank you. Here's a list of the reference.